Director of the Burton of Bideford, and we're here with this year's Environmental Commission Award, Frances Gin, and she's brought along her works to show us, which will be hanging later today. So Frances, can you just tell us a bit about the process and how you found the Commission? I started off coming to, up to Biddeford, uh, looking at the, the whole biosphere, which included the boroughs, uh, other areas that, near the Worsford Hoe Point. It's the boroughs that uh, drew me back in particular, mainly because of all the flora there. And this has been my sort of current uh, inquiry, uh, looking at flowers and uh, the effect that plastic pollution may have on them. And so plastic is very much a part of the work. How do you produce that and what's the significance of it? What I, what I do is I collect found pieces of plastic that are washed up on the beach or in this case pieces that are lay around on the estuary and then I apply um, a thin layer of acrylic paint and about three days later when it's really dry you can peel it off. So I peel it off to reveal the characteristics of plastic as we know them. When there are enough of them you can identify things that you come across in everyday life, fruit containers, food con or food containers um, and so I'm using that language to then assemble them within the painting or drawing as a collage. And what's your sort of interest? I know you said it's an inquiry. What's your interest in the plastics? I do. I may have been looking at plastics for quite a while now. Um, and I was, I've been looking at ghost nets and, and the plastic there uh, within the seas. And I went on a, um, um, a fellowship to Italy where I began an inquiry into whether or not the plastic pollution was affecting the flora, the coastal flora, and discovered uh, there was very little information about it, not so much known yet, but since then a little bit more has come to light. And uh, in that the nanoplastics are now getting into plant life through the, through the node, through the, the part of the, the, the lateral when it hits the main stem into that join, there, there is, there are, um, there's evidence that uh, there are plastic part, nanoplastic particles there. That's my inquiry. And how, you, and how, it? how it's affecting the plants itself in terms of their size, their growth, that sort of thing? That's right. Um, I mean, some places in the world uh, I've seen where plastic is uh, a metre high, so you wade through plastic. Obviously, the plants underneath don't get a chance to live because mm -hmm. um, they're not getting light. But there's a lot of uh, yes, a lot of plastics are now uh, are in the fertilisers which are fertilising our fields. So it's come inland um, yeah. and also into the atmosphere. And you've done a, a range of works, which uh, some of which well, there's two pieces that will enter our collection, which is fantastic. Very pleased with them. That's um, great. Tell us a bit about how you how you made the works yourself. Okay, so these uh, these two in particular were I did out in the open uh, on a rainy day um, with some sunshine. I, I took a um, a plate which is a, a stainless steel plate and drew with black pigment and took it back to the studio once dry, made a print from it by taking some Japanese paper, this is very fine Japanese paper, using a baron, which is a hand, a uh, little instrument made of um, bamboo, and if you press hard enough and in circular mo uh, movements, you can get an impression. And my impression was very minimal, but it gave me enough of a feeling of what was out in the, my experience in the open. I then started to, to draw into it, um, so I could draw the detail and also think more about what I wanted to do which is quite hard when you're out in the environment. Mm. Um, I started using some bit of a black which I ground down uh, to a fine powder and mix, mixed it with a medium mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I was able to apply it with a brush and with my fingers. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.